developing or non developing so if we see the india the currently per capita demand it is around 14 to 15 kg per person and if we see developed countries like say america or other uh, other places that their demand is more than 70 kg so there is a huge uh, difference among the if we compare with other countries but nowadays we see uh, earlier it was that that the wood required for paper industry was used to come from the forest but 1980s onwards the policy shifted shifted there were so many policies regarding forest conservation so policy shifted and uh, the new industries commercialized industries started coming up more pronouncedly they came up in uh, indo gangetic plains like merat region or even uh, yeah, haryana punjab region in southern central india in, in madhya pradesh in uh, south india tamil nadu some parts of uh, andhra pradesh where bhadrachalam is located that itc has come up in 1990s and they started promoting commercial agroforestry and people realized that uh, the trees the not only providing ecosystem services but also provides so many other uses and they are they can be one of the basis for income generation and nowadays we know that uh, we we find uh, people or even government is promoting tree so the agriculture in agroforestry three major components are there first component is agriculture for raising food crop because no farmer is ready to grow trees alone because he wanted to fulfill his demand uh, demand for food and also want to generate some income because as we know planting trees it is not a, uh, not a like a one year or two years it minimum takes five years to 50 years so for th this much years he cannot uh, simply pl uh, plant tree and uh, wait so raising crops also one of the important things so agriculture come up then next uh, most important thing is livestock or fodder security this uh, second thing uh, most important is fodder because uh, all farmers in semi arid arid or even tropical condition like humid condition the farmer keeps some sorts of livestock because livestock gives them uh, gives them income in the form of money and to fulfill the requirement of livestock he requires uh, he requires uh, some uh, fodders fodder say or grasses even some tree fodder so all these components simultaneously uh, are interactively integrated to get more and more positive interaction whenever two to three component we are mixing each other there is always some clash or there is always complexity and that complexity sometimes gives us a bad result or negative result and uh, sometimes it is there is uh, chances of uh, reducing yield or some sometimes chances of uh, Uh, other calamities like uh, destruction of soil resources so by keeping all these three component agriculture forestry and livestock the science has emerged scientifically it emerged in 1977 you can write it down sometimes the question may come the uh, cgir system they formulated world agroforestry center the also second name is international center on agroforestry research icraf i c r a f international center for research on agroforestry it is located in nairobi kenya and uh, the center emerged in 1977 and the agroforestry science started running then in india when we see the scientific organization that first they started in 1984 all india coordinated center for agroforestry a i c r p a f if we see in maharashtra there are three agroforestry centers one is located in your university that is mpkv rahuri second one is at uh, pdkv akola but it is located in nagpur college and third center is हेलो नेटवर्क इश्यू इज देयर एट योर साइड प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ हेलो संग्राम आवाज देते हैं 
अनम्यूट कर अनम्यूट ओके हाँ यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल सर कुछ आता जस्ट एक ओके दे ओके ना यस 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 सो सो थ्री सेंटर्स आर लोकेटेड इन लोकेटेड इन महाराष्ट्र आउट ऑफ थर्टी सेवन टोटल थर्टी सेवन सेंटर्स थ्रू आउट द इंडिया इन डिफरेंट एग्रो क्लाइमेटिक जोन एज पर द रिक्वायरमेंट इन महाराष्ट्र थ्री सेंटर्स सो वन सेंटर इज नियर कोस्टल रीजन दैट इज कॉलेज ऑफ फॉरेस्ट्री दे आर वर्किंग ऑन कोस्टल बेस्ड एग्रो फॉरेस्ट्री सिस्टम देन अनदर सेंटर एट एम पी के वी रावरी दे आर वर्किंग ऑन टीबीओज और टीबीओज और फॉर्डर सिक्युरिटी रिलेटेड एंड वन मोर सेंटर एट पी डी के वॉकोला इट इज लोकेटेड इन विदर्भा सो आफ्टर एटीन नाइनटीन एटी फोर इन नाइनटीन एटी सेवन नाइनटीन एटी एट द नैशनल रिसर्च सेंटर ऑन एग्रो फॉरेस्ट्री एन आर सी ए एफ इट इज स्टार्टेड एट झांसी एंड टू कॉर्डिनेट दी ए आई सी आर पी रिसर्च थ्रू आउट इंडिया एंड टू टेक अप द इश्यूज इमर्ज इश्यूज ऑन साइंटिफिक बेसिस so in 1988 national research center on agroforestry started at jhansi and in 2014 the name of national research center on agroforestry nrcf it changed to central agroforestry research institute jhansi and it that nrc national research center is upgraded to central agroforestry research institute jhansi it is located in jhansi near igfri everyone might be knowing about indian grassland and fodder research institute again it is located in jhansi and the both the institute they are working uh, on agroforestry uh, more pronouncedly agroforestry center is working more so these are some of the development regarding agroforestry so as i mentioned earlier it is not simply stretching out forestry and agriculture uh, to uh, make the science everyone thinks that but it is uh, nothing like that recent uh, pandemic situation or any other situation we see natural resource degradation situation the what we think that something is happening climate change is happening what we are telling temperature is raising simply we are telling there is destruction in the forest area or nowadays uh, no uh trees are we are uh, harvesting the trees or uh, uh, filling out the trees so we are getting increased temperature so first of all whenever there is a natural calamity the trees is the first choice of uh, people to uh, combat that particular situation so agroforestry is the concept it is not something in between agriculture and forestry it has its own merits and own power so in agro uh, as like agronomy agriculture there are also definitions of agriculture uh, agroforestry and some of the scientists they have mentioned that uh, so most widely used definition there are two definition most widely used one definition given by bain at all 1977 and another one definition is nayer uh, he uh, given this definition 1979 so pkr nayer generally also called as the father of agroforestry so pkr nayar uh, he is from kerala but uh, he is working uh, uh, working uh, in icraf and other uh, institutes for development of uh, agroforestry so the definition by ben what it mentions the agroforestry as a sustainable management system for land that increases overall production combines agricultural crops forest plants and tree crops and or animal simultaneously or sequentially and applies management practices that are compatible with the cultural pattern of the local population they mention that we agriculture crops and forest these two things we are uh, we are integrating but sometimes it is as per the requirement of farmer or animals and or there may be animals also incorporated or livestock also incorporated or sometimes it can be kept aside in commercial agroforestry system generally agriculture crops and forest Uh, tree crops the both are integrated but for in farmers perspective if their uh, fulfillment of the fodder requirement the uh, the uh, animal components also included so uh, there is uh, so many definition given by but there is a, uh, basically one of the easiest thing that integrating agriculture crop with the trees it is the simplest definition of agroforestry then agroforestry only trees means not alone forest trees there are Uh, forestry is also there are some economic uh, herbs al uh, shrubs also some palm palm means our coconut or oil palm or uh, even palmyra palm or areca nut these are comes into palm and uh, bamboo bamboo because recently bamboo is a not a tree it is a grass and it is a woody perennial 
so these all the components with agriculture crop deliberately used on the same land management unit for raising agriculture crops and animal either in same form or special or temporal sequence special and temporal sequence generally you can uh, see uh, if we talks about you might be heard the word shifting cultivation what we are generally doing there in northeast india uh, we are uh, means uh, almost we are uh, clearing the forest and uh, burning it there itself and then raising the crops and the practice we are doing for 10 to 12 years and later we are keeping uh, land as such the, so this situ uh, situation tells us the temporal some uh, some period of uh, uh, we are doing agricultural crops and sometime we are raising the uh, forest crop these are the uh, temporal sequence and special sequence or special arrangement it is related with the how we are planting trees whether we are planting trees on the boundary we are planting trees in some uh, form like in agriculture you might be uh, learn about planting techniques it is quincus planting square planting rectangular planting or triangular planting so in that way it is the special arrangement uh, requirement if we go uh, go in uh, drier part of maharashtra say in mandesh we can see uh, the babul trees are uh, grown uh, grown on boundaries if we go in rajasthan rajasthan you can find in maharashtra uh, the trees are maintained on boundaries but in rajasthan uh, scatteredly randomly trees are maintained in the field itself like that that tree is kgd prosopis cineraria it is the boon or it is gifted tree to the uh, by, uh, that rajasthan region arid region and they are helping us lot to them we will also uh, seeing that so these are the special arrangement sometimes it is systematic and sometimes it is randomly or in the form of a boundary plantation so uh, why agroforestry is important as uh, during our introductory slides we have mentioned uh, the trees they are produce, providing multiple products see in agriculture generally if we plants uh, we sow the uh, rice or paddy or uh, wheat what we are getting only paddy or wheat but in case of agroforestry it is uh, not like that the tree which is standing uh, on farmers field or near to them that tree is providing multiple products it provides uh, uh, if it is a vegetable tree it can provide some leaves or uh, flowers or pods for vegetable purpose it provides fruits it provides fodder trees we see nowadays uh, fodder trees like banyan uh, banyan luciana lucifera that is subabul uh, then sisbania sisban sisbania grandiflora amorus alba uh, and uh, there are some of the grevia species also we are planting for uh, tree even sometimes we use neem for a fodder purpose and also for fuel we know nowadays okay everywhere we are using gas but still the uh, the situation is there 70% of population from rural background still they are dependent on fuel wood and uh, good fuel wood tree good like lucena lucifer again good fuel fuel wood tree our acacia nilotica that is the way generally tells us uh, babul that is also fuel wood tree then uh, there are so, uh, certain trees like azadrecta indica neem azadre uh, melia azadrec nibara everyone knows about that so even sispania some sort of uh, uh, its wood also we are using for the fuel wood purpose then some trees there are timber trees everyone knows timber means tree everywhere some uh, people likes to plant timber tree then also that trees add some leaf litter like deciduous trees they uh, adds litter and it helps to improve our soil we will see how trees are improving soils uh, soil also then agroforestry practices minimize the crop failure nowadays what we are seeing in the climate change scenario some or like cyclone times uh, uh, we are getting huge cyclone so all sugarcane is getting fall down or lodging effect is there but thing is uh, that that if we are planting any crop with agroforestry with so there are chances of minimum crop failure even if you take the example of uh, why uh, why it is happening the tree if uh, uh, we are planting crops with trees tree having there its own microclimate modification effect microclimate effect it reduces the temperature it reduces the water losses it reduces the your uh, soil erosion and all this also it adds nutrient to the soil and all these factors helping uh, the crop to come up better way also sometimes so many insect and diseases attacks we see uh, we see so what trees tree attract that insects and disease as a catch crop so these things are even uh, it sustain the crop productivity sometimes it increases 
the again it improves the nutritive value of human diet we know that animals require proteins and what we uh, in irrigated plains what we are finding the farmers they are giving animals uh, sugar cane tops or sometimes uh, nba hybrid so these things are in not give providing protein content in proper amount if the particular uh, animals feed with the some of the tree leaf fodders so tree leaf fodder consist of proteins more than 10% even in lucena lucifera is a wonder wonder fodder tree because it provides more than 22% of uh, uh, protein content so these things are uh, really helping so agroforestry is one of the practice uh, and it is helping again improving the living standard it gives income like suppose like 10 12 years whenever there is some uh, uh, marriage in the family or even there is the me medical requirement that time if we are having some trees we can harvest it and we can uh, fulfill even education requirement of students also can be fulfilled so so there are so many and important thing it provides employment opportunity one hectare of agroforestry provides more than 10 employment opportunities for a year even more than that also can be the minimum 10 uh 10 people it can accommodate in the one hectare so there are certain nowadays we are talking about ecosystem services or environmental services how the trees are stabilizing nowadays we see everywhere uh, water is polluted air is polluted there is so much dust so many pop, uh, population explosion is there everywhere uh, 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 dust problem and pollution pollution problem uh, water pollution every pollution is there so how trees are helping us some there are certain trees say tamarindus indica tamarind indica that is imli or uh, chins it is having very minute leaves but it is the one of the best dust filter tree it filters the dust so you you can uh, find majority of places in the dry semi arid track uh, tamarindus indica is planted along the sides of uh, sides of road there are banyan trees they are uh, we know that there are some certain road but the, in the uh, developmental cause we are harvest uh, all we are making uh, roads very clear and we are planting some exotic tree but uh, trees are helpful for all purposes even nowadays we are facing the issues of uh, flash flood we know that uh, particularly kolhapur region or some parts of uh, sangli region we are getting uh, facing the issues of flash flood because there there are no, uh, no trees is remaining on the boundaries uh, of uh, fields and uh, along the sides of river so all whatever soils are coming it is getting uh, saturated or it is getting deposited in the rivers or uh, nalas and all water is coming out so these formations uh, these difficulties are we are facing as i mentioned microclimate effect again it reduces the pressure on the community forest uh, it is reducing the pressure because if we are going for the agroforestry so many trees we are planting and we, uh, we will be dependent on uh, that trees only in uh, agricultural land trees only so the forest can be saved so this is one of the agroforestry soil basket the agroforestry trees if we are integrating with agriculture uh, so how it is uh, going to give us benefits first is it increases the nutrient input from the atmosphere and deeper soil so many trees are leguminous bases so we know what leguminous tree does they increases the soil carbon if we take the example glericidia and lucena lucifera these both trees are the fertilizer tree or leguminous tree what they are doing if we are planting on one acre of land Uh, one hectare of land they are increasing nitrogen content uh, in land more than 300 kg so there are so many trees if some trees they are not leguminous but uh, due to their deciduous nature the uh, leaf litter fall it improves the soil again it controls the erosion reduces the losses of soil organic matter then it is closed the nutrient cycling and efficient use of nutrients maintains and improves the soil physical properties our properties if we see there are certain studies if we grow completely monoculture agriculture crop and the crop with agriculture uh, forestry the soil if we compare the soils of the both the plant you will find the better bulk density better nutrient status better organic carbon and uh, uh, optimum ph optimum ec uh, ec can be reduced uh, even saline uh, problematic soil can be changed so these all benefits can be obtained with the trees even nitrate it's having nitrogen fixing ability uh, Uh, fixing ability augment the soil water availability it increases soil water availability ameliorate the acidic and alkaline soils as i mentioned enrich the soil organic matter reclamation of degraded lands and soil carbon sequestration so all these things can be obtained with the agroforestry so why agroforestry we uh, uh, we discussed also 
nowadays population explosion fuel crisis climate change soil degradation poverty malnutrition so all for this all problem there is a solution and that solution is a agroforestry if we do properly it is very much benefit there are certain benefits like uh, uh, attributes of agroforestry uh, will not go in detail that is productivity sustainability adaptability that uh, words uh, itself uh, 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 says its meaning that productivity it increases the productivity of our agriculture field uh, it is sustainable it can maintain fertility throughout the year so uh, every year we will be getting uh, positive benefits from this and the adaptability it is already accepted by the farmers and uh, nowadays most of the things what happening in the villages everyone wants job no one is wanted to work in the field so they are moving towards they are migrating towards uh, uh, cities and there is uh, no one uh, the people are very less to do agriculture continuously and due to hectic crop failure and all other things now people wanted some assured income and for um, that particular assured income with less efforts the agroforestry or fruit based systems are coming up then so there yes if there is certain positive effects are there means absolutely there will be some negative effect for it is managemental uh, problems how uh, farmers are I, as i mentioned if we are uh, integrating tree and cross as tree grows it uh, increases shade condition and once shade condition increases or there will be the competition and that competition will be for light water and nutrient means space nutrients and moisture this critical resources so there is certain need it is not like that so only i have mentioned earlier agroforestry is a science it is a not a practice simply planting trees so choosing the right tree at right place is much more important at same time suppose we are going for teak based agroforestry system so if teak is growing second year third year fourth year fifth year every year that a canopy will be different height will be different so the requirement nutrient requirement will be different root system will be different all these factors are one way or other way going to attack uh, uh, our reducing the yield so the choosing of crop is a very much important thing choosing of varieties there are certain uh, certain crop species they are uh, they are growing under 30% shade 40% shade or 50% shade but there are certain species they are not suitable for growing inside the Uh, with trees so based on the requirement based on the choice based on the land resources we need to choose agriculture crop as well as a tree species then again it, it damages food crops during harvest of the trees yeah absolutely uh, whenever we are uh, having some certain practices like uh, say uh, pollarding uh, say cutting down some uh, trees uh, tree branches so uh, sometimes if crop is uh, growing there and same time if we are cutting there is there may be damage so we need to decide that particular which tree we are going to get trees may serve as a potential host yes sometimes trees may serve as a potential host uh, host sometimes it attracts so many insects say there is a one example like the sugar cane nowadays there is attack of uh, root grub root grub in sugar cane fields and so many uh, farmers facing issue and what they are saying uh, they are saying that due to Like that root grub, humni, uh, humni is a problem. We are going to talk about that. That particular. So uh, that attacking the. Sometimes it is happening. Then again, some trees, like say example of uh, prolific regeneration. Say uh, take example of lucerne lucifera. If we are not harvesting that lucerne lucifera timely, like polar, uh, cutting down the branches or lop, uh, lopping, so sometimes it is giving huge uh, seed production, and that seed germination rate is more than ninety percent. so this effect so allopathic effect again there are certain trees say take the example of eucalyptus eucalyptus steridogonus or eucalyptus species they are having certain uh, chemicals in their leaves as well as roots exude some uh, chemical effect and that chemical hinders the germination it hinders the germination or growth of particularly crop it the effect is more pronounced in the pulses so uh, so while choosing the uh, proper crop uh, requires then again require more labors yes as i we mentioned that it provides the uh, job opportunity to more people at same time so the labor charges will be more trees require longer period to economically yes absolutely correct 
because uh, it is not like that agriculture crop sowing uh, today and harvesting three three months four months five months or majorly we are harvesting the crop uh, agriculture crop in uh, within two years but it is not uh, in case of agro parity but but nowadays in the in the state of uh, Tamil Nadu uh, the Kajurina equity folia suru Kajurina equity folia eucalyptus teridocornis these trees are harvesting within twenty four months within a two years they are harvesting for biomass uh, generation. So these all things are uh, there, there are some limitation factor. And if there are these limitation factor, how to overcome these limitation factor? Uh, foremost thing is the tree management practices that as I mentioned, pruning, thinning, plopping, pollarding, and coppicing. These are the different things. Pruning means pruning out uh, the side branches. Sometimes we are telling in lopping also, we are doing same thing, but pruning in horticulture is something different and pruning in uh, forestry, these uh, things are different. Singling means if there are two, one, more than one or two stems, we can single out. We are keeping only single good, uh, good performing stem. Thinning means suppose in case of we are having the uh, teak plantation, uh, teak plantation planted at five into five feet or six into five feet. So what generally happens after three to four years, uh, four years, we require diameter grow, growth or lateral growth. Under such situation, due to uh, we are uh, planting so many trees near to each other, uh, the trees are growing, uh, height growth only we are obtaining. So after four years, we need to remove certain stems to create a space in, inside the plantation. So thinning practices uh, uh, followed. Then polarizing, there is another concept if we see in, uh, uh, in, uh, in case of uh, Himalaya, they are widely using this polarizing concept, but in uh, India, in Maharashtra also, uh, so we are planting Subabul and after uh, planting uh, six or seven months, at the height of 1.2 meter or two meter, we are topping out the top portion. And that top portion, topping out the uh, top portion, uh, gives us uh, more and more fodder. That is known as uh, polarizing. And coppicing means uh, above soil, uh, above soil surface, 10 centimeter or 15 centimeter. We are harvesting. This is uh, in case of eucalyptus. Generally, eucalyptus is uh, harvested after four or five years, and again uh, the new shoots uh, emerge from the stump. It's kept for further thing. So there are again classification, as I mentioned, agroforestry uh, having uh, three to four types of classes, but uh, all four types are not important. We will go with uh, only one time uh, based on the structural classification and this agroforestry classification given by Nayar. Sometimes this question they, uh, they may ask uh, uh, the, who gave agroforestry classification. So Nayar and uh, majority is the structural classification we are following here, the overall scheme of agroforestry. In structural uh, basis, again, it is divided into two things, nature of component and arrangement of component. Nature of component, again, divided into four things, that agri-silviculture, silvopastoral, agro-silvopastoral, other systems. We will see in detail in upcoming slide. Then arrangement of components, as I mentioned you in the first slide, uh, while uh, mentioning the definition of uh, uh, agroforestry, spatial arrangement and temporal arrangement. Temporal arrangement, it is like uh, on the basis of time or period, and uh, it is based on the planting geometry. And the functional uh, uh, basis, it is the easiest thing, productive and protective purpose. Productive means for uh, getting some money, like uh, pulp wood or uh, uh, plywood industry, and protective means for uh, controlling soil erosion or uh, degraded lands converting, that is comes under the protective. In case of socio-economic basis, then again, it is like productive and productive only. The thing is different. Uh, it uh, states the economic benefit of that particular tree. And ecological basis, again, it is like pro pro uh, protective type of humid means uh, in humid, which trees, in semi-arid situation, which trees are helpful, highlands, which trees are in, in, uh, helpful. These things can be. Uh, so in structural basis, in nature and component, we will go directly to the, uh, you might be heard the word is agri-silviculture. Agriculture and silviculture. Again, you may be telling that agroforestry, okay, forestry, but what mean by silviculture? So, uh, so generally in agriculture, which one uh, the best uh, means uh, main subject? We know that agronomy is the main subject. In agriculture, agronomy is main subject. In same case, in forestry, silviculture is the main subject. So, silviculture deals with the the cultivating of trees, and it provides us uh, all information from. Uh, planting to till harvesting. So the agri silviculture means silviculture means here we will take the that is trees. So agriculture agri silvi means agricultural crops and silvicultural crops are combined for positive purpose. So so we will see under this agri silviculture again ten types or uh, ten different types are there. Improved fallows that is uh, we know that shifting cultivation we will see in detail. Then another one this tongia system. 
third one is multi species garden alley cropping multi purpose trees and shrub on uh, like boundary and then crop combination with plantation crops say like uh, coconut and agroforestry for fuel wood production or energy production and uh, this two terminology shelter belt and wind break these are the major uh, terminology in ag agroforestry and soil conservation hedges like contour planting so we will go for first improved fallow species in shifting cultivation everyone knows that shifting cultivation i have mentioned that shifting cultivation we are clearing down some uh, patch of uh, trees and then burning it and after burning that ash is uh, improves the soil status and we are cultivating uh, crops for uh, 10 years or 12 years but as the our population is increasing the uh, rest period generally earlier times the rest period for that particular patch was more than 10 years so within 10 years that patch used to get rehabilitated in particularly region but nowadays it is not have happening due to more population land resources are shrinking and due to that the rest period is come down the cycle is reduced now cycle from 10 to 15 years it's came down to 3 to 4 year so what farmers in northeastern region what they are doing they are shifting one place to another place within 2 to 3 years they are not allowing uh, that particular patch to get reclaimed so due to this the uh, shifting cultivation creating huge problems uh, uh, like first of all pollution is there soil degradations are there so so many things so improved fallow means what it is the uh, it is the uh, strategy to reduce shifting cultivation uh, so objective is to recover the depleted soil nutrient once the soil has recovered and crops are reintroduced for one or more reason so uh, generally what we are telling in local language we are telling zoom zoom cultivation in various states that name change somewhere we are telling podu some tree, uh, some places we are telling kumri generally it is followed in the high forest area north eastern patch and some parts of uh, tamil nadu and some parts of uh, orissa and andhra pradesh it is not followed in Mahara, uh, maharashtra so zoom cultivation again the name see shifting cultivation also known as zoom cultivation zoom cultivation also known as slash and burn cultivation or even it is also known as x cultivation a x e means apan je kurad mantu and kuradi na sagi dhad todto tyamala te it is known as x cultivation and generally uh, the process is that we are harvesting that uh, trees we are burning it there we are growing annual crops and after uh, growing annual crops when that soil is not fit for growing annual crops uh, they kept vacant for 4 uh, 5 years again some forest comes and uh, this again secondary forest after some years again they are harvesting so uh, the benefit is that that uh, farmers are getting good crops and uh, they are uh, their livelihood is dependent on that but actually if we see the uh, negative effects one on environment it is definitely effect but uh, huge exploitation of our labors because it take huge time there are sometimes injury and uh, our biodiversity also getting there and uh, it is always problem for getting uh, food fodder and uh, when we are cutting and burning the Uh, forest then improved fallow species you see this system of production that improved fallow fallow means we know madran uh, we are keeping land fallowing sometimes if there is no one is there to do agriculture we are keeping that uh, land as a fallow for 2 to 3 years and after whenever we are getting some money or we are getting interest then we are going so uh, so shifting cultivation as i mentioned mainly prevalent in the in india it is uh, northeast india but other places say africa then america southeast asia and the indian subcontinent in india it is uh, distributed in more than 15 states assam manipur orissa chatisgarh mizoram jharkhand some parts of madhya pradesh nagaland and but mainly there shifting cultivation known as as i mentioned earlier slash and burn zoom zooming or zoom cultivation in northeast india you see in jharkhand it is known as khallu the question they they generally they ask question the alternative name of uh, shifting cultivation or uh, shifting cultivation also known in orissa or uh, andhra pradesh or even in tamil nadu tamil nadu language they are generally telling kumari or kumri kumri cultivation uh, podo cultivation in orissa or andhra pradesh uh, uh, what generally it happens trees and shrubs are uh, not grown with the crops on the same plot as the time fallow period uh, they are keeping the land for 10 to 20 years and they are growing the uh, trees so this practice helping us to reclimate this so what what tree species are uh, used generally fast growing preferably nitrogen fixing 
tree species are followed in uh, then acacia nilotica alnus nepalensis this is important tree in north uh, northeast region erythrina indica upon uh, in maharashtra we are telling pangara pangara is erythrina indica but it is a related species erythrina variegata then glycidia sapm and lucerna leucocephala these are both fertilizer tree or having a huge capacity to improve the soil then parkinsonia albizia procera casuarina equisitifolia casuarina equisitifolia is a non rhizomatic tree species but it uh, uh, fixing nitrogen uh, by using frankia so sometimes they ask a question the frankia uh, uh, related question that uh, non non uh, non leguminous tree tree species for improving soil uh, improving nitrogen picture then effect of uh, shifting cultivation we mentioned deforestation soil erosion uh, poor organic matter increases soil these all are, all clauses are there these are northeastern sir majorly you see 16% 18% 16% in assam in mizoram 18% in arunachal pradesh assam meghalaya 14 and more uh, widely in manipur so uh, so how to control so we need to impose agriculture uh, agroforestry there by planting trees with uh, crops uh, in contours so the shifting cultivation can be uh, reverted back and uh, that uh, land can be reclimated so these are the some of the example again taungya cultivation uh, we know taungya taungya means hill and cultivation it is like uh, uh, for uh, reducing shifting cultivation taungya system are emerged so it is organized systematically for managing shifting cultivated land the taungya generally the question comes the uh, taungya is uh, originated from burma myanmar so it is originated from uh, myanmar then uh, taungya meaning taung means what and ya means what and the word whether it is latin word or burmese word so taungya is a burmese word and coined in 1950 the taungya system consists of growing annual agriculture crops along with forestry species during the early years of establishment and the taungya system uh, first uh, first started by dietrich brandis dietrich brandis also known as father of indian forestry so in 19, 1856 dietrich brandis started uh, cultivating uh, or using our taungya system again taungya system having two to th uh, there are three types so uh, in different language we will see uh, what taungya means uh, this is not more important for forestry to know uh, if we see uh, the taungya system taungya system was introduced in india by brandis sometimes this question comes regular plantation started in uh, north bengal uh, under taungya mainly teak and sal were grown under taungya plantations so uh, will go uh -huh. these uh, another one important generally questions comes from this types of tongya cultivation so there are three types one is departmental tongya leased tongya and village tongya generally we are not following nowadays this thing but in uh, earlier uh, earlier period we used to follow the departmental tongya means forest department allows the local people to cultivate agriculture crops in the forest plantation the main aim of uh, this departmental tongya this uh, the cultivation of agriculture crop reduces the weeds and it helps to grow that particular trees main aim of raising crops along with tree plantation is keeping down the weed growth then leased tongya means sometimes for even forest department they gives uh, farmer some land and they ask them to on leasing purpose and that farmers they do cultivation of uh, uh, trees as well as crops and village tongya means again they set up complete village in the forest they ask the villagers to stay inside the forest by creating some staying facilities and they do it generally each family they are allotting 0.8 to 1.7 hectare generally uh, uh, in agroforestry they ask this question how much land is allotted in village tongya so it is 0.8 to 1.7 hectare for raising uh, uh, crops then advantages again same uh, it is uh, helps to reduce shipping cultivation uh, forest can be grown very well the unemployment the problem of unemployment can be solved uh, maximum utilization of land and it provides food as well as uh, trees reducing weed and climber growth uh, sometimes what disadvantages means if we allow the farmer uh, instead of uh, they what they do they they give more preference to agricultural crops than trees and due to this uh, sometimes tree growth getting hampered so this problem and sometimes it comes the legal problem Uh, that particular lease lease the farmer claims that land uh, nowadays we know in 2006 the tribal act came 
so due to that uh, if the particular people they are dependent on forest and they are doing so uh, government has to allot some land up to 4 hectare to the that particular farmer and so these are there. then again third type is multi species tree garden this is nothing but so if there are some people from konkan belt or some kerala they might be knowing that uh, home gardens the particularly uh, in uh, konkan uh, paras bag we are telling paras bag or even nowadays what uh, in uh, our place also so many people, uh, we are, around the our home we are planting so many trees on boundaries some trees inside some trees then again we are planting some papaya banana or uh, some we are taking up some kitchen gardening crops so these are the types of multi species tree gardens and uh, uh, these helping us a lot in all aspects it provides food fodder even woods uh, it fulfills our home consumption and it also gives us the economic uh, economic benefit the second one is alloy cropping again important questions come alloy cropping alloy cropping it is more related with the agronomy people uh, we are doing intercropping intercropping like hedge row intercropping it is also the alternating term for the uh, alloy cropping alloy cropping is a promising agroforestry technology for the humid and subhumid tropics generally it is followed in high rainfall regions like humid northeastern region where uh, where due to heavy rainfall the soil erosion is more under such situation the contours are formed and uh, leguminous trees are planted in uh, densely like uh, making hedges uh, making hedges and they are what they are doing they are not allowing to grow more just they are 1 uh, meter above 1 meter they are harvesting that trees and that harvested product used for fodder or uh, as a green manure and due to this uh, soils get, uh, soil status gets improved so woody plants are they are pruning woody plants regularly particularly in alloy cropping lucena lucifolia uh, gliricidia these two species widely they used who uh, that this technology is developed by international institute of tropical agriculture iita located in nigeria by kang sometimes the question comes who introduced the alloy cropping or who uh, uh, which institution is involved for introduction of alloy cropping so international institute of tropical agriculture uh, and located in nigeria or sometimes they ask question the iita stands for or itg uh, iita is located in so and also uh, the bt kang the scientist who involved in this so this is the general thing uh, maize is uh, intercropped with uh, subabul and subabul they are not allowing to a uh, grow much so this can be uh, the alloy cropping type so generally uh, like as other thing in india majority of alloy cropping research uh, carried out in ikrisat everyone knows ikrisat is located in hyderabad so it is cgir system uh, college so these are the uh, layout in northeastern uh, region what they are uh, they are doing the direction of uh, crop or direction of uh, uh, that hedges this uh, he, uh, the tree planting is known as hedges and inside the uh, between two rows those are uh, spaces remaining that is known as alley so east to west direction is generally followed uh, for planting trees and the spacing between uh, two rows is around 4 to 8 meters and within row the spacing is very dense they are planting in even sometimes 1 feet 2 feet 3 feet they are not having for wider spacing but between row spacing is the wider so ideal tree for alloy cropping uh, the main is it should have sparse canopy then small canopy and it has to permit sunlight for agricultural crops uh, after pruning or repeatedly pruning or lopping it has to come up uh, uh, resprouting the root system should be deep so it cannot be compete with our agricultural crops it should uh, take moisture from the deep moisture and nutrient from the deeper layer shallow uh, shallow lateral roots sometimes uh, we plant some trees having uh, lateral root so we need to do pruning practices uh, deep pruning near uh, tree row so that roots cannot uh, can cannot hinder the growth of uh, agricultural uh, commodity uh, then leaf litter it should have decomposition rate faster and ideal tree species uh, one or two questions may come for example alloy cropping tree so gliricidia lucena lucifolia again elithrina uh, pithocilobium dens everyone knows uh, i think in karad campus uh, the college of agriculture near karad they are having pitho pitho silobium dulls uh, more because i i am from that uh, vijayanagar region my basically i stayed there so pitho silobium dulls is more and uh, during my childhood i used to come for taking that uh, 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 tamarind pitho silobium dulls acacia species 
then albizia semen and cajanus cajan these species are generally planted for alley cropping advantages as same advantages it provides additional income reduces the chemical fertilizer use as we are using as a green manure improves physical uh, status reduces the soil and uh, provide uh, even medicinal medicinal value the you know, forages high roots this thing and also helps in weed control so limitations uh, again that same limitation nowadays labor is the import uh, mo, uh, major limitation for agriculture so sometimes hedges uh, interfere with the agriculture crops so reducing the yield uh, we cannot go for mechanized uh, cultivation as the uh, hedges are near to the so sometimes roots get damaged and uh, and it attracts the insects so uh, on slopy ground this type of uh, planting we can do it on uh, about this generally followed in northeastern uh, region so if uh, here is the one example how the yield get uh, increased suppose we are planting maize maize in different rainfall region you see 100 mm rainfall 200 mm rainfall 300 mm rainfall to up to 500 mm rainfall and uh, uh, maize is means mono mono cultivation of maize the yield you see uh, yield is increasing absolutely if rainfall is increasing yield is increasing but in case of uh, the yield in with alley cropping so with alley cropping you see the yield yield differences are more huge so alley cropping they are uh, helpful then another one is multi purpose tree species shortly we uh, call it as a uh, multi purpose tree species the tree which provides more than one benefits benefits uh, as i mentioned earlier we will not go inside so in major major components multi purpose tree can be forest trees even fruit trees or common agriculture crop primary role hai tree products hame milte hai aur protective functions dete hai say as fencing or uh, uh, other and important multi purpose trees lucerna lucifera acacia albida cassia cajerina equisitifolia folia azadrecta indica even tamarind also one of the important multi purpose tree jamun also important multi purpose tree and cocos nisupera there are uh, certain this practice generally followed in the konkan region or kerala region or tamil nadu southern part where majority of plantation crops plantation crop generally you you, you are knowing very well coffee tea coconut uh, cocoa or uh, other what generally happen in tea states and coffee uh, coffee states in uh, northeast region as well as karnataka and kerala region uh, that coffee and tea required certain amount of shade condition shade condition say the shade condition for uh, at least minimum 30% shade so for providing that shade and reducing the soil erosion we are planting some trees as a shade on one of the silver oak silver oak is widely used for planting uh, planting in tea states and coffee states grevillea robusta it is the, the scientific name of silver, silver oak is grevillea robusta in uh, again uh, in coconut what uh, the other trees like areca nut even some uh, trees on boundary plantation we are uh, planting so this providing extra income providing shade and uh, and fodder as well as green manuring and it improves the uh, agricultural crop yield you can see these are the here in this picture uh, shade trees these are sometimes albizia species also sometimes erythrina species also but majority le silver oak is widely used you see here examples we have mentioned albizia chinensis albizia odoratissima albizia libex albizia procera acacia species deris robusta grevillea robusta widely used species and another one is uh, erythrina erythrina species then one is indigo fera so these species are used see this is uh, uh, again in coffee states uh, this photo uh, coffee states from karnataka uh, in poor uh, particularly place erythrina species uh, same similar species can be used uh, even sometimes dalbergia latifolia our uh, artocarpus albizia libe uh, grevillea robusta this species and nowadays agarwood everyone knows the herd about agarwood Uh, nowadays the tea people in assam they are going for agarwood cultivation because if uh, we say uh, sandalwood agarwood these tree species are getting highly highly valued tree species so uh, sometimes uh, again that in cocoa that whatever trees we are growing so black pepper can be raised on that uh, small cardamom trees large cardamom they can be introduced in the, this type of tree then again agroforestry fuel plantation we as i mentioned 70% of rural population still dependent on fuel wood Uh, because nowadays we know rates are more thousand rupees for one cylinder so everyone wanted some trees and uh, we generally maintain trees for the fuel wood plantation sometimes in uh, yearly basis there are some family functions 
and under such function we need to prepare food so widely fuel load is used and what generally we are using fuel load accession loadika in our region or neem alsen albizali bag and uh, the fuel load space is the important criteria for a good fuel load space is the calorific value the if that the calorific value lignin content the hardiness these things are more in that particular fuel, uh, fuel load tree space is higher the uh, efficiency and it pro gives uh, good thing generally so only a tea cord is a not a good uh, fuel load tree even sometimes our uh, pongamia pinata pongamia pinata is not a good fuel load tree but same time acacia nilotica is the best fuel load tree then important thing again the shelter belts and wind breaks both things are the different it is not like that shelter belt and wind breaks are same thing the shelter belts that these are the belts or block consisting of several rows of trees established at right angle to the prevailing winds the main purpose is to deflect currents and where the shelter belts we are using you see uh, we are using in the uh, semi arid region or arid region or our desert uh, rajasthan haryana punjab where the in summer uh, some, summer time or in uh, summer region from february to uh, march to may or june Uh, uh, heat temperature is so huge, and that time uh, wind is flowing. So it's giving desiccation effect to agriculture crops. So if uh, shelter belts is maintained, it gives positive microclimate effect. As I mentioned, how that microclimate effect it reduces the that uh, wind velocity. It uh, increases protection leeward uh, leeward side, and at the same time it provides food for the timber. So these are the this is the like it is multi multi row species. Uh, tallest tree is planted in the center, and other short tree which is economically benefited, and even shrubs are also planted in, uh, like say, mehendi, uh, lawsonia inner mist. These are planted in the Rajasthan uh, as a shrub there, and uh, some uh, fruit trees also can be planted with these. So shade composition, triangular cross section composition, tall trees in the center, and both side uh, small shorter uh, height trees, tall trees then. Uh, low spreading shrubs and grasses at the base so orientation it depends on the direction and velocity of the prevailing wind quadrangle if the wind direction tends to changes very quadrangular means uh, from all in square type of planting all the boundaries of that particular uh, field height again uh, it is effective if uh, center tree if it is 10 meter height so it gives the effect up to 40 meters generally and in rajasthan taking the height of shelter belt about 7.5 a uh, spacing again uh, for uh, uh, making a hindrance to the wind it is 1 meter or 2 meters or sometimes 2 to 3 meters spacing is uh, spacing is followed the choice of species again it is based on the local requirement uh, which the eucalyptus is widely used uh, used for that acacia species also are used and uh, for shrubs as i mentioned uh, the caperis decidua and uh, uh, another uh, another one species lawsonia inermis mainly is widely used characteristic again same characteristic fast growing uh, wind firm drought resistant uh, it should not be leafless at the time of uh, uh, wind flow or in summer condition it 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 be, should be the multi purpose tree species can provide firewood timber fodder then these are the important you say the in grasses we can go for grasses also centaurus cilarius means anjan grass or saccharum saccharum munja paniculatum then in shrubs like uh, even calotropis uh, procera everyone knows about calotropis generally we are using uh, using for a hanuman then uh, clotoralia protoralia species clerodendron species cassia uh, uriculata the uh, leaves of cassia uriculata and pods are used in the uh, tannin tannin extraction rhodonia viscosa jacropa again biodiesel we are using this biofuel purpose so sisbania aculeata or sisbania agia for fiber and floss yielding species similar time small trees like acacia species as i mentioned then trees albizia species acacia species dalbergia species eucalyptus sometimes pongamia pongamia uh, uh, can grow uh, very drought hardy species so it can come up. and tecomela undulata this is uh, if uh, the participant from uh, uh, rajasthan they know tecomela undulata is like teak we are having sagwan as such it is sagwan of uh, marwad region and eucalyptus species so this is general the view of uh, wind uh, shelter belt you can see the deflection we can get it deflection up to it can protect the land 20 meter or 30 meter even more than up to 100 meter so advantages we mentioned that uh, no need to go uh, in detail wind breaks again it is wind breaks 
See, shelter belts are very small in nature. Small farmers can follow, but wind breaks generally. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, uh, wrong. Uh, shelter belts are like huge. They are planting uh, throughout like community. They can go for two kilometer, three kilometer, even ten kilometer. Shelter belts are present. But in case of wind break, generally the uh, private person, like a small farmer, he can go for the wind break. And wind break, he is planting generally in uh, our place. Hello, Sangram, you are not audible. Wait, uh, I think network issue is there. But I will call him. Sorry, sir. Actually, uh, we, uh, internet ka bahut bada problem chal raha hai. So, isiliye wo mobile se connect kiya. Audible? I am audible. Yes, yes. Please continue. Uh, sorry, 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 participants. Actually, huge problem is going on here uh, today from morning nine on. So advantage of wind breaks, it again same similar type of advantages as planting, increasing yield, protecting soil, sheltering livestock, capturing water runoff, nutrient, improving irrigation, filtering and reducing dust, so screen uh, help, reduces noise, improves aesthetic value, and uh, this an width is a 50 meter wider is always considered as the ideal. And height width ratio should be 1 as to 10. In wind break, height to width ratio. Sometimes they ask the ideal ratio for height to width ratio of wind break. So, this and again, as like a shelter belt uh, shapes also like triangular shape. Uh, orientation depending on the direction and velocity of prevailing wind. But minimum length 25 times means if we are planting a tree here, 25 times of that height. 10 meter is the height, means up to 250 meter we will be getting the advent. Uh, uh, effect of uh, wind breaks. So this is not uh, okay. Coming to the again, uh, soil conservation hedges. Uh, our tenth uh, uh, subtype of agri silviculture. So uh, we know everywhere under uh, uh, Narega, uh, so many plantation is going on during the uh, June July, and we are planting uh, so many trees. We are uh, taking out some, trees and so this is that uh, that practice. Animal. Uh, these are planted on that uh, trenches. Again, uh, the example region to region, this tree species generally uh, changes. So, so this, this uh, conservation, you see, like on the slopey lands, we are keeping uh, some trees on the boundary, and uh, they are helping us. So, the second type of the uh, agroforestry is the silvopastoral system. 
so name exist silvo pastoral sil again silvo means agric uh, forest crops and pastoral means the forages which are used for livestock or uh, the, it is also known as we can tell uh, it is as a silvi pasture also the production of woody plants combined with the pasture it is referred as silvo pasture shrubs used here mainly uh, fodder related uh, shrubs so as i mentioned the different grasses are there centaurus ciliaris centaurus setigeras uh, uh, and uh, other like uh, some grasses like lucerne bursim uh, then our the shrub grass this type of grasses are planted with uh, uh, with uh, fodder trees say fodder trees lucerne lucifera morus alba even moringa are widely used as fodder tree so this type of uh, uh, so some uh, in generally this practice is followed earlier we used to follow in india but uh, nowadays due to shrinking of land resources it's very difficult uh, difficult again in this particular section it is uh, uh, categorized into three things protein bank live fence and trees and shrubs on pasture land so as i mentioned protein bank means planting lucerne lucifera morus alba in dense dense means at the spacing of 2 into 1 feet or 3 into 1 feet if we are planting and that plantation can be providing protein protein requirement of crop and majority of the tree species are having the protein content more than 16% they are preferred for planting living uh, living fences or live fences uh, uh, these are the various live fences say again cajurina uh, uh, again our eucalyptus uh, sorry again our uh, lucerna is widely used for live fences sometimes some trees related to ficus family they are planted sometimes uh, trees related uh, our nimbara that is uh, melia azadria it is planted on the boundary and it provides the fodder and uh, some trees and shrubs on pasture land we generally finds in uh, Uh, if we goes in towards solapur region or ahmednagar some dry karja uh, jamked we can find acacia lycophloia the this tree species is grown on, on the grasslands or pasture land so uh, as well as they are used by our goats and sheep so this this type of uh, systems also available uh, again this is uh, important like protein bank grivia optiva widely used in the himalayas bhuniya variegata again in the uh, western himalayas himalaya morus alba again in himalaya but uh, we are also using uh, morus alba here artocarpus leaves also used for uh, amanjisus latifolia this species uh, used widely for fodder in the central india mainly in the uttar pradesh madhya pradesh and some parts of rajasthan cordia dicotoma again this species again used in maharashtra as well as southern parts uh, then the uh, some uh, dalberja sisu semia species jisiba jujuba acacia nilodica we know acacia nilodica widely used in the maharashtra solapur and uh, some parts of karnataka region also so live uh, for living fences these are the example to protect the property from stray animals uh, and as well as uh, the biotic influence so and also to provide the uh, fodder so sisbinia grandifloria gliricidia cpm lucerne lucifera sometimes this euphorbia we are planting for protecting purpose not for, for but there are certain cactus species uh, cactus in my institute the one uh, cactus garden is Some uh, non uh, non thorny cactus are grown, and that can be used for as a fodder purpose. And so, it pro in uh, desert region like say uh, Rajasthan, uh, there are some experimentation is going on, and even farmers they are using cactus as a fodder because it is having uh, more than eighty seven eighty to ninety percent uh, uh, moisture content, and it fulfills that animals requirement of for water. So, these trees on uh, pasture land, as I mentioned. then a third part is uh, agro silvo pastoral or agri silvi pastoral system here we are introducing crops trees and pasture lands so again multi 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 species garden also one of the example for the uh, this it is oldest form uh, traditionally we are growing everywhere then uh, as i earlier i i have mentioned that home gardens if you see uh, sometimes we are going for mixed garden like horticulture we are planting uh mango banana papaya inside the same garden so it is like mixed garden uh, horticulture mixed garden or house garden home garden homestead garden uh, compound farm kitchen garden uh, paras bag as i mentioned in konkan region or kula ghar uh, kula ghar that is also known as uh, and homestead agroforestry what we are doing generally we are here like vertical stratification generally form uh, the tall trees they are either planted on the boundary or randomly in the field then uh, the tree species which uh, uh, can grow under some sorts of shade 
they can be planted like say if we are planting a teak on the boundary uh, some tree species like uh, cashew can be planted inside mango can be planted inside uh, cedium godava also plant can be planted inside uh, and uh, citruses and again herbaceous layer like uh, many vegetable crops can be grown so based on the requirements uh, of light the trees are stratified into different layer is the top tree secondary layer somewhat uh, little uh, height height tree and then tertiary layer you can find here it, it is the one of the graphical representation of home gardens various trees are and this most widely uh, uh, followed or uh, practiced in the high rainfall area like tropical region say kerala in kerala you will find huge uh, home gardens more than uh, one hectare gardens are available but in case of our urban uh, belt maharashtra like ratnagiri or, or sindhu our home gardens are less than one hectare even less than half these are the general home garden schematic picture you can see so again as i mentioned allocropping also woody hedge row also our live fencing also woody hedge row we will not go in uh, detail and then some there are some of the other system like apiculture uh, apiculture also it is uh, one type of agroforestry only so many uh, flower inducing tree species are planted uh, nearby and uh, the bees are kept there for uh, honey purposes then aquaforestry uh, planting uh, trees on the boundaries of ponds uh, for getting multiple benefits these are also aquaforestry as so tree species like moringa even sometimes fungemia uh, rubber trees also you know uh, they are planted so these are the silvio horticulture as i mentioned uh, planting trees and some uh, mango trees so take this example of uh, agri horticulture system where mangoes are planted with the groundnut or any other other crops then uh, agri silvio horticulture again we have learned uh, so many tree species with crops and uh, uh, crops and horticulture fruit trees we are planting teak plus pomegranate plus uh, coriander you can take this example of uh, uh, horticulture system aula is planted with uh, fodder uh, fodder grasses or you can see in uh, in himalayas like jammu kashmir apple trees can be planted with the various uh, uh, fodder uh, fodder trees so these are the some of the example uh, example like agri silviculture uh, agri silvi pasture silvi pasture uh, tongya systems then silvo pastoral and shifting cultivation so the one section is over so we need to move for westland or uh, some other day we can do sir uh we can continue continue na okay ha, sir ha, ha. is it visible uh, systems of agroforestry na no agroforestry for westland development westland management sir uh, not visible it now sir agroforestry uh, for westland development Ah yes yes it's visible we can continue <coughs> okay another uh, half an hour bear with me uh, <laughs> i'm feeling so much about you <laughs> i am with you <laughs> <laughs> okay sir you are always uh, uh, we talk about westland when we call westland means the land is not suitable for anything uh, and nowadays uh, there is uh, everywhere everyone claims that Uh, suppose uh, like i am from uh, agroforestry so generally i tell uh, so many westland is available so go for agroforestry there uh, some uh, fodder uh, like scientists from uh, uh, for uh, grassland uh, they comes and they can tell so many westland is available go for uh, uh, grassland uh, grassland and the, like like in similar fashion everyone comes and everyone claims that uh, the plant uh, fruit trees also fruit scientists also they come we can go for aula cultivation or some other cultivation on this well westland and uh, there are so many uh, debate is go, uh, going on really that uh, westland is uh, westland because if you see uh, particularly region of our uh, mandesh uh, solapur and uh, atpadi region sangli region the so uh, grasslands are there and some scattered trees are there and uh, 
knowingly unknowingly scientifically or unscientifically we call that region as the wasteland so it is not like uh, like that it is the actually grassland like savanna type of grasslands are there and so many uh, uh, grasses and so many biodiversity is growing there and uh, so many people are dependent on that but uh, uh, due to our definition of uh, wasteland uh, we think that uh, it is uh, not a wasteland uh, it is a wasteland so national wasteland development board 1984 nwdb the question generally asked it is uh, in 1984 uh, they formulated national wasteland development board uh, to make efficient utilization of uh, barren types of uh, lands for uh, getting supplying for food fodder timber so they they de uh, they defined wasteland land which is degraded and is presently lying unutilized except as current fallow due to different constraint the definition given by national wasteland board and generally uh, the land which is not having capacity to produce 20% of biomass also known as wasteland so uh, there are different types uh, generally we call it as the degraded lands or some lands which are not uh, unused or some lands uh, uncultivable we are not cultivating and some lands are completely barren like rocky uh, rocky land these barren lands actually in reality it is wasteland and uh, developing that lands is very difficult but uh, on degraded lands or uh, sometimes uh, uh, heavy uh, heavy utilization or encroachment some lands become degraded so this type of land how we can use uh, efficient utilization of that lands for uh going for agroforestry or uh, taking rehabilitating that lands or reclaiming that uh, lands so sometimes agriculture lands are uh, lying fallow more than 2 years also termed as agriculture waste land land under the control of revenue department and not fit for agriculture lying barren can be termed as revenue waste land and grasslands and the lands under the control of forest department which do not have tree cover can be termed as forest wetland and again uh, as per the report of technical task group constituted by planning commission the wastelands are the degraded land which can brought under vegetative cover means aisi koi bhi land jisme hum koi bhi ped laga sakte hai us land ko hum west uh, wasteland bhi bol sakte hai degraded lands bol sakte hai so all sorts of wasteland or uh, what are the reasons for becoming degraded or uh, becoming wasteland first thing is the its a natural uh, natural characteristics of that particular land poor fertility or geography demography of that particular land steep and undulated slopes shifting cultivation we discussed a lot about shifting cultivation then nowadays due to climate change so uh, frequent floods uh, freak, uh, frequent droughts are coming so uh, due to that some due to floods also so many lands are under water for a complete year so that lands also comes under uh wasteland category some lands due to uh, unable to have irrigation facility assured irrigation so they are uh, wasteland frequent submergence as i mentioned the lack of resources uneconomical return under cultivation of land and due to some legal, legal difficulty these are the uh, these are the important uh, reasons for lying the land becoming a wetland so uh, actually uh, we do not have exact picture in current picture for uh, wasteland Uh, but 2011 there was a, a report by uh, westland uh, atlas of westlands uh, india so some figures uh, various years the figures uh, so many agencies are working in india uh, and they are giving their own figure so you can see there is always debate is going on actually how much is the westland so when we say that agriculture is on 142 million hectare area under agriculture around 78 million hectare area under forest uh forest again nowadays uh, we start as i mentioned that my important contribution significant contribution is quantifying agroforest area and currently that agroforest area is again 24 million hectare so from where these figures comes it is a still confusing thing so in similar fashion uh, so many agencies reports you see the national commission on agriculture nca it's uh, formulated in 1976 you see uh, this question also can come 
then uh, there are uh, another national wasteland developmental board earlier i told 84 so it is uh, 85 then nbss lup located at uh, nagpur so these type of questions can be come from this slides and uh, wasteland you see so many people they reported 175 million hectare somewhere and uh, 123 hectare by wasteland national wasteland development board and uh, nowadays what generally we follows we tells that 120 million hectare area under uh, wasteland so so many figures are there we will not go so largest wasteland in india yeah, yeah. which state is having largest wasteland so million uh, 93000 square kilometer area in rajasthan is under, uh, this is the uh, arid desert means hot desert and second one jammu jammu kashmir that is having cold desert that is leh ladakh that is in comes into uh, picture the madhya pradesh this is again you see madhya pradesh andhra pradesh some parts of maharashtra this actually this part of uh, grassland but uh, forest wasteland we are saying them so these are the ten states uh, which is having more wasteland so again wasteland there are different categorization classification so important classification culturable wasteland and unculturable wasteland so in uh, culturable wasteland the uh, the wastelands are those lands which have potential for the development of vegetative cover or uh, may be reclaimed at later stage uh so uh, we know that uh, different uh, types like gullies and ravine lands ravine lands anyone knows yeah, if uh, when we are traveling from madhya pradesh i means uh, uttar pradesh jhansi to delhi there is one patch is coming chambal ki rani to sapne suni hogi to chambal ki chambal jahan par hai wahan par hai bade bade matlab uh, loosen type of soil structures hai sand structures hai और वो वहां पर जब भी बारिश होती है तो बहुत सारी सॉइल uh, पानी के साथ आकर वो फॉर्मुलेट होते हैं रेवाइन गली जिसको हम रेवाइंस बोलते हैं तो ये बहुत ज्यादा इंडिया में लगभग चार मिलियन हेक्टर uh, एरिया में uh, रेवाइंस है देन अनडुलेटिंग अपलैंड एवरीवेयर इज देयर वाटर लॉक्ड एंड मार्शी एरिया ड्यू टू रिपीटेड कैनॉल सिस्टम इन टू Affected. Then again, shifting forest area, as we mentioned, degraded forest area, also some type, sort of a uh, wasteland, and mining and industrial wasteland. So these these lands are wasteland. Unculturable wastelands, the area, the land which cannot be developed in all. And which is to develop. Uh, uh, or unable to plant any trees these lands are unculturable wasteland and however some of the areas of such land can be converted or changes into pasture land but still it is a uh, highly uh, risky and uh, so many huge amount of money is required it uh, includes the barren rocky area steep slopes snow covered grassier areas so approaches to rehabilitate of uh, these uh, degraded lands uh, so many approaches are there but why agroforestry or trees are easiest thing because uh, generally we uh, think that tree is a hardy species where uh, it can come up uh, with available resources uh, and so only planting such lands with uh, tree species is uh, need of the hour to uh, fight against climate change and uh, security uh, food security or environmental security so uh, this uh, rehabilitation different tree species are used for different purpose it is not like that the one tree species is good for uh, everywhere so again the choice of species see take the example of uh, ravines in uh, chambal area uh, in 1970s uh, the government of india they have what they have did the aerial uh, aerial seeding they did With, by using some sorts of helicopter or uh, planes, uh, they thrown seeds of Prosopis juliflora. Everyone knows about so Prosopis juliflora, uh, Vilayati babul. It is known as Vilayati babul. So what uh, what happened now? Why choice of species is more important? Uh, also, similar practice happened in the. Uh, you know, everyone where is lion in India? कोई बताएगा क्या? अनम्यूट करके बताइए लॉयन कहां पर है इंडिया में कौन से प्लेस में है कोई बताने वाला स्टूडेंट्स सो गए क्या सारे अरे जोपला का बोला ना कुटा है सिंह कुटा है भारत मधे 
बर्थला सांगतो गिर फॉरेस्ट गिर फॉरेस्ट हां गिर फॉरेस्ट गुड वेरी गुड तो गिर में लायन है लेकिन वहां पर वही यही चीज हो गई थी प्रोसोपी जुलीफ्लोरा द ट्री इट इज इनवेडेड लाइक एनीथिंग एंड नाउ गवर्नमेंट इज गिविंग टेंडर्स टू प्राइवेट पीपल टू अप्रूव दैट जुलीफ्लोरा सो चॉइस ऑफ स्पेसीज इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट वेन एवर वी आर गोइंग फॉर एनी टाइप ऑफ अफॉरेस्टेशन प्रोग्राम नाउ डेज देर इज लाइक फैशन समथिंग इज देर वील वी यूज टू प्लांट सो मेनी ट्रीज ओके प्लांटिंग इज अ रियली नाइस थिंग it is like worshiping only but uh, the choosing of right species is uh, really important so nowadays it is havoc in that particular region and many cities nearby areas are uh, flooded in even in baramati region even felton region you can find it uh, this uh, prosopi juliflora and now people are investing huge amount of money they are paying it almost 50 to 1 lakh rupees for uprooting 1 acre of land so these problems are coming up while we are going for uh, the species which is not good for that uh, re- uh, region so uh, so choice of species is very much important then so for uh, so which species can be preferred again it is local species indigenous species the species can be helpful either in the form of for providing fuel wood fodder or some sorts of fruits and the root system can uh, reduce the soil erosion Uh, it has binding capacity nitrogen fixing capacity so that land can be let uh, uh, land can be improved or soil health can be improved there are certain grasses that can uh, be also uh, integrated for uh, ravine type of lands so these are the one table different uh, categories of uh, mining soils are there like the bauxite uh, bauxite mine area coal mine area limestone area rock phosphate mine area lignite uh, lignite mines fall area mica copper so in this type of uh, lands where growing trees is very difficult and there are certain tree species having good ability they can reclimate that uh, land say uh, always so many people talks about eucalyptus it takes water but it is unscientific it is not scientific for production of 1 kg of biomass um, 1 kg of wood eucalyptus takes hardly 500 liters of water but in same way if we think about any our indigenous tree say uh, pongamia pinata everyone knows pongamia pinata currens 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 to sirf uh, lagbhag 1400 liter pani 1 kg lakdi banane ke liye leta hai to uh, bahut sare misconceptions hai science mein to but lekin eucalyptus is really the species which can be used anywhere for planting with there are certain precautions based on our biodiversity conservation natural forest we cannot go for eucalyptus but at least the area which is uh, not fit for cultivation we can go certain like acacia catechu again one of the hardy species can come up in anywhere the khair jisko khair bolte hai aur uska lakdi lakdi bhi bahut valuable hai then agave americana lucena lucifera erythrina so many species can be planted in uh, different uh, lands so again we are coming again with for ravine land which tree species can be plant, planted so many grasses as i mentioned डाइकेम है थिमेडा है इरगोटिक्स है देन बुशी श्रव्स में हम जिजीपस न्यूमेलरिया जिजीपस और कैपेरिस ये दोनों स्पेसिस लोकल फार्मर्स इसको कलेक्ट करके मार्केट में बेचते हैं तो ये लाइवलीहुड जो सिक्योरिटी बोलते हैं दैट सिक्योरिटी कैन बी अचीव बिकॉज कैपेरिस डिसिडिया उसको टेटिका टेटी टेटी करके पेड़ बोलते हैं तो उसको आचार बनाया जाता है उसका कैशिया टोरा अगेन सम जेरोबायोटिक ट्रीज एकेशिया सेनेगल एकेशिया सेनेगल का जो उसको इंडियन गम अरेबिक भी बोलते हैं इसका जो गम होता है जैसे हम बबुल ट्री का गम निकालते हैं वो भी अभी आजकल 300-400 रुपए के जी है तो एकेशिया सेनेगल का जो गम है जो हमारा सबने बटर स्कॉच तो खाया होगा तो बटर स्कॉच आइसक्रीम में जो गम यूज किया जाता है क्रंची मटेरियल जो होता है वो एक्चुअली एकेशिया सेनेगल का या एकेशिया हमारा बबुल ट्री का गम होता है तो उनको भी ले सकते हैं एकेशिया निलोटिका कैन बी यूज prosopis again uh, giving example of prosopis juliflora it is uh, uh, again havoc so we cannot do that uh, balanites egypt egyptica this species also can be used so if we are planting tree species uh, it develops uh, biomass increases biomass develops soils also so there are certain food uh, food based models that can be used for some certain uh, uh, certain saline or alkaline or wastelands also you can take example of eucalyptus with kinno Uh, there we can go if uh, some irrigation facilities there bears also one of the easiest thing for degraded lands uh, amrud also good options 
so there are certain semi pastoral model like uh, leptocloa fusa this color grass uh, widely grown on saline or salty patch in uh, punjab uh, karnal region as well as the haryana region and uh, uh, when we are there is land is having problems so this grass can yield more than 13 to 20 tons of fresh forage per per year and with other tree species also it can be uh, planted so there are other grasses like uh, chloris gayana uh, panicum uh, antito uh, antitode panicum virgatum this type of uh, grasses can be planted and that land can be converted you check uh, in sand dunes as i mentioned in haryana uh, haryana uh, uh, rajasthan region you see this is the prosopis cineraria prosopis juliflora is different this is uh, generally we tell as symmetry uh, this is khd so in uh, rajasthan it is a boon why it is a boon what farmer generally do during the months of uh, winter months take the example of this they lop it this tree and they allow us to grow and during uh, after february march this tree starts sprouting new uh, foliage and that foliage used for camel or sheep or other livestock it is best fodder uh, fodder tree as well as uh, this tree produces uh, pods and that pods are known as sangri and it is used as a vegetable uh, vegetable if you see this this vegetable is sold at the rate of 400 500 rupees kg and uh, uh, in historically Uh, generally in rajasthan culture the marriages used to be happen based on the how many number of trees that particular uh, person is having if he is having more uh, prosopis uh, cinerea trees they they used to think that person is very huge generally what in maharashtra we are telling how much agriculture land how much uh, sugar cane you are having in similar fashion there used to be because this tree is a very uh, drought hardy species and under uh, drought like situation only the source of uh, food for animal as well as uh, for humans also this tree so in jaisalmer region they used to make this checkerboard method for uh, sand dune stabilization there may be question can come the best method for sand dune stabilization so checkerboard method and this method is developed by kadri central arizona uh, research institute located at jodhpur so this type of practices can be followed so again here uh, the proper selection of methods for rehabilitation Uh, can make you can see this uh, animal this is the barren land and by using uh, some uh, treatments like uh, using uh, seeding or uh, uh, by using some legumes based uh, fodder uh, forage uh, grasses like brachyria or stylosanthus uh, himata stylosanthus cabra this type of grasses they they uh, in there. so choosing of this so again there is a uh, uh, as i mentioned earlier that prosopis juliflora but uh, one thing has come up that even in i have seen in uh, baramati and uh, pelton region also and also in tamil nadu during my masters uh, what the, they are doing whatever prosopis juliflora is growing uh, the people, uh, some people they are involved they are cutting down that all trees and they are burning and they are converting into charcoal some some people they are selling to the some of the boiler some industries required boiler for extraction of oil or uh, uh, other purposes so uh, nowadays one good uh, benefit is there they are converting into charcoal and they are selling that uh, charcoal and also nowadays you see the fire uh, fuel wood if we are going for purchasing fuel wood 5 uh, to 6 rupees even 8 to 10 rupees also there are rates so as a fuel wood that can be used so energy plantation can be grown on uh, various types of uh, wasteland so criteria for a uh, uh, good fuel tree tree species should be fast growing high photosynthetic uh, efficiency producing high yield tree species should have capacing and foliaging ability means whenever we are harvesting again it has to resprout higher demand uh, uh, demand should be higher and uh, it should be having good calorific value high wood density wood density lignin content it decides calorific value and tolerate incidence of pest and diseases ability to withstand in drought condition ability to fix nitrogen these are the common characteristic can be used so there are certain tree species you can uh, take example of this are the 10 tree species acacia uriculiformis uh, australian bobul it is uh, widely grown in our uh, konkan belt acacia catechu again khair acacia nilotica again our bobul the specific diameter is more than 0.6 is uh, always good you see acacia catechu is the hardiest tree 
and uh, calorific value above 4000 calorific value is always good for the uh, fuel load purpose like butyl monos from apples we are telling plus kajurina equity polya again very best tree for the and in uh, tamil nadu region so many high density kajurina plantation planted for the energy purposes eucalyptus species also the widely used and as i mentioned prosopis uh, juliflora so in uh, different region like a uh, dry region which species uh, humid region which species Uh, subtropical region which species these are the some of the examples then for biofuel nowadays what whenever you are visiting any petrol pump uh, that petrol pump they are asked uh, they asked for uh, asked for blending of biofuels or biodiesel and that oil in our historically if we see uh, the undi undi uh, undi cha dhar sagana mai asel calophyllum inophyllum je sea shore che je asel kokanatli mulo tanna mai the undi cha तर उस पेड़ के जो फ्रूट्स आते हैं वो बहुत बड़े बड़े रहते हैं और उस फ्रूट्स से वो ऑयल एक्सट्रैक्ट करते थे और उस ऑयल को लाइटनिंग लैम्प करके यूज करते थे सिमिलर सिमिलर वेज महुआ का जो सीड्स होता है महुआ मधु का लेटिपोलिया या मधु का इंडिका उसका भी यूज करते हैं तो और तो ये चीजें आजकल क्या कर रहे हैं 2005 में 2006 में जो 2005 में नेशनल बायोफ्यूल पॉलिसी आई थी उसके तहत इट इज forced to all other fuel companies to blend their fuel uh, fuel petrol or diesel with 15 to 20 percent up to now it is increased to 25 percent so uh, which trees are having good efficiency for uh, biodiesel so pongamia pinata one of the best tree jatropha jatropha everyone heard then simaruba glauca lakshmi taru isko bolte jo uh, this tree also used as uh, it is having evergreen nature very shining uh, leaves are there so this tree used for uh, ornamental purpose uh, roadside plantation then azadeca indica nowadays we know the even urea is blended with the neem and neem oil everywhere we are using calophyllum inophyllum maduka longifolia this type of the trees they are using for the extraction of biodiesel and uh, again uh, suppose we are having huge as i mentioned more than 100 million hectare area under wasteland and these trees are really they are hardy in nature so uh, extra income can be generated and the barren lands can be converted again these are high density plantation we will not go in the for high density plantation bamboo kajurina equisetia folia lucena acacia poplar these species are planted in uh... so there are certain like problematic soil this might be covered by some soil uh, soil scientists also so we will see only which these species are there uh, different saline soil sodic soil saline sodic soil uh compact soil acid soil to water logged soil so everyone knows about this saline sodic and uh, differentiation uh, so we will not go in much in detail about that we will see the tree species uh, so for uh, saline soil uh, again kajurina equisiti folia prosopis juliflora eucalyptus uh, camaldulensis acacia uriculiformis uh, then uh, the com most common species is the acacia nilotica then azadeca indica this species uh, can be used for uh, converting saline so uh, saline soil and saline soil uh, uh, then uh, for sodic soil again uh, so many species are there that can be planted sygium cumin also can come up uh, good under such uh, soil then acacia nilotica also there for acidic soil generally in high rainfall area acidic soils uh, many uh, like uh, konkan region or himalaya region so under uh, acid soil the acacia category is the best tree even bail is the best tree imblica officinalis like our uh, aula melia melia azadeca sapindus uh, uh, then pterocarpus marsupium this is uh, good fuel uh, good timber tree these trees can be planted so you can see the degraded lands and by making trenches and uh, other thing the different tree species can be planted for reclaiming that degraded uh, uh, lands then uh, they, uh, we know that water logging problem everywhere now this issue is uh, increasing the canal canal based irrigation is everywhere and what we are doing the near canal area so many uh, water is stagnating in low lying uh, lands and how to control this how to convert this land into productive purpose so uh, as i mentioned earlier the uh, again eucalyptus whenever eucalyptus is getting good ample amount of water what it is doing it is draining out that water but it is depends on the condition if you are planting eucalyptus in jaisalmer region it is having ability to grow under such so there is one concept comes biodrainage 
high evaporation, evaporation transpiration based trees they are planting and they are making that efficient utilization of that particular uh, land so eucalyptus is uh, even acacia cactus uh, 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 sometimes like our uh, terminal species terminalia this uh, species means terminalia arjuna arjun tree sito pito silobium bulls uh, even jamun tree these type of species are planted in waterlogged areas and that area can be converted into wood so different aspects are there uh, we know that the land capability classification and uh, after four uh, four classes four five six uh, all the sort of classes agroforest is the option either mul uh, multi strata cropping or alley cropping or boundary plantation scattered tree uh, or silo pastoral tree so uh, and before going i will uh, i will ask you if you people are majority of people using uh, mobile phone android based mobile phone so they can go in their google app and they can uh, download uh, install the farm tree app here uh, the beauty of this uh, application is that uh, 30 tree species information those are widely used even from sandalwood mahogany neem or uh, other tree species uh, like pongamia pinnata from planting to harvesting where to get planting material also all information are mentioned there so whenever you are uh, those people are having interest uh, for uh, trees they can uh, have a sir they can put their comments also if they like like means and uh, uh so uh, i am ending my talk here almost we completed agroforestry what is agroforestry from agroforestry different systems in that we completed uh, agro uh, wasteland development then uh, related to uh, other than that we consider silvicultural uh, cultivation different land use practices how uh, trees are agri silviculture silo pastoral silvi pastoral agri silvi horti system different examples of trees uh, like plantation trees which trees used for silvi uh, shade tree purpose then uh, boundary uh, fencing purpose which tree is best uh, then water logged condition which tree is best then area so different uh, what we see and uh, uh, we will be doing uh, there are sort of thing so uh, i will be happy to in future if sir calls me actually i am belongs to karada only uh, presently i am staying in kadegaon but uh, my uh, from childhood onwards i was staying at vijayanagar and my home still it is there so i will be happy to come deliver lecture there so it will be more interactive actually i am not uh, able to see the participant whether they are liking or not but uh, in future uh, surely sir will provide me opportunity and to pick you around and uh, uh, prashant uh, sir for providing me such a nice wonderful opportunity thank you sir thank you thank you very much uh... among the participants i request if anybody having any query uh, they can ask directly to sir or sir excuse me sir ha uh, less lokesh please sir good morning sir sir is there any specific tree available for to reclaim saline soil sir acidic soil that's what i saline and acidic soil as i mentioned yeah. saline soil uh, mainly yes, our acacia species yes sir they are uh, suitable for saline soil if i mentioned any tree there uh, able to reclaim that soil you yeah, know that is 